These days, we heavily depend upon technology to maintain our social network. To instigate us, there are plenty of apps available to download. So, the app that I use frequently is WhatsApp. Three years back, I found the app on Google Play Store and downloaded it instantly. This messaging app is extremely popular across the world. It has an intuitive interface, which makes it easier to access and use the app. WhatsApp lets you contact others through text and voice messages. If you want, you can also make voice and video calls. To spice up communication, WhatsApp makes it interactive to communicate by allowing us to share emojis, pictures, stickers, GIFs, and more. On WhatsApp, we can also create groups. I am a part of varied groups, one for my relatives, one for my friends, and one for my colleagues. People, together, can talk in a group instead of individually messaging each other. Moreover, it's a great way of sharing one single message that has to be sent to multiple people. In fact, we can also broadcast a message to several people at a time. One of the best things about this app is the feature that lets us share a status. We can add pictures or videos to the status. In addition to this, we can also write our thoughts and share them. The best thing is that our statuses automatically get deleted after 24 hours. At last, the best thing about WhatsApp is that it is available free of cost. Perhaps, that's one of the reasons why it's so popular. During the first wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, one of my cousins, Kim working in an MNC, was laid off. It was extremely challenging for her family to make ends meet, and things were slowly getting out of hand. So, my father suggested they start a small business as plenty of pandemic-friendly businesses run successfully. Kim was not only my cousin but also my best friend. As Kim was passionate about baking, I suggested she start a home-run bakery and serve all the sweet-toothed people in the vicinity because most small businesses these days operate remotely. Initially, she struggled to get customers, but by working tirelessly and investing her endless efforts, her homemade cakes were selling like hotcakes. Slowly, Kim's birthday cakes, matchmaker muffins and macarons, icebreaker cookies, and pies gained popularity, and her business significantly began to expand. She integrated with Swiggy and Zomato to take more online orders and made her online presence in social media applications to attract more customers. In no time, Kim's home-run bakery thrived, and during the second wave of the pandemic, she opened a small bakery. Kim's bakery has grown by leaps and bounds, and I believe it is due to her well-defined vision, tenacity, and commitment.
Lately, I haven't had much time to go out for a movie since I've been up to my eyeballs in reports and presentations. Hence, to relax and boost, I rented some good old movies and made myself some healthy snacks for a late night treat. Silver Linings Playbook is one of my all-time favorites and I've lost count of how many times I watched it. The last time I watched it was a week ago on Saturday night. I don't prefer Oscar-nominated movies due to their complexity and lack of entertainment but Silver Linings Playbook was an exception. I've always preferred something which was sentimental, light-hearted, yet meaningful and this movie had it all. Silver Linings Playbook was an adaptation of the novel written by Matthew Quick, starring two incredibly talented actors Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence. This romantic comedy movie is about two wounded souls who found solace again. Pat Bradley, a former teacher, was just released from a mental institution and was trying to reconcile with his betrayed wife despite his family's protest. He met Tiffany, Jennifer, a woman with problems of her own, and things got complicated. Two people bearing hidden scars with no hope in the future finally had lights in their lives again. The movie was not heavy at all but extremely entertaining with some laugh-out-loud moments. No matter how many times I watched it, I get emotional every time. The underlying message was also a shout-out to anyone who believed they had hit rock bottom. When one door closes, another door opens. Therefore, keep moving forward and don't lose hope. If anyone runs out of movies to watch, I highly recommend the Silver Linings Playbook as a change of appetite. In my to-meet list, there are so many well-respected celebrities whom I wish to meet and spend time with. However, I would like to share about Pele, who is considered one of the greatest soccer players in the world. Initially, I really need to kick off with the point that Pele was just 17 when he first played in the World Cup in Sweden in 1958 for Brazil. Despite his very young age, he was selected for the national team participating in one of the biggest sports competitions on the planet. Back then, he was not the star player but when his teammate was hurt, Pele went into the game. He immediately scored a goal and Brazil won the World Cup. By his amazing aptitudes and skills, Pele was feared by other teams. The Brazilian government even named him a national treasure. It is not doubtful to say that Pele is one of the biggest factors making Brazil's soccer so well known. His last World Cup was in Mexico in 1970. Brazil scored four goals against Italy to win the World Cup for the third time. Another point that I would like to share is that Pelé owns an admirable career that every soccer players crave. Pelé holds many records such as having over 1,000 goals in his career. He was nominated Athlete of the Century in 1980 and became a member of the Soccer Hall of Fame in 1993. Although he's now retired from professional competition, Pele has still been considered a great inspiration for soccer players and lovers.
During my college days, I had the pleasure of hearing many fascinating talks and lectures. The lectures I am going to talk about took place at my college conference hall around two years ago. I don't usually take much interest in talks and lectures. However, certain lectures pique my interest. During one of my regular class lectures, one of the instructors invited all students to a guest lecture. So I went to the notice board to see what the lecture topic was, which turned out to be happiness. I decided to attend the seminar right away. The lecturer began his talk by asking questions such as, what makes you happy? And, what makes you want to be happy? He then engagingly crafted his speech, including some intriguing numbers and responses that may come to people's minds. He talked about the concerns and causes of people's suffering in such a common and pushy manner. People are imbued with the belief that in order to be happy and acquire a level of bliss, one must suffer. During the lecture, one guy brought up a topic that really caught my attention. The value of happiness in life and why people are chasing happiness through worldly items when we would eventually have to leave everything behind after death. The instructor said that it is what gives life its meaning. Humans' lives would become meaningless if they do not chase things, yet they should not become greedy. When the professor finished, I realized that happiness is a personal condition of a being. Pleasure should not be dependent on others. Rather, it should stem from your own successes and not be stifled by comparisons to other people's happiness.